Welcome to the new pre-recorded format for Theorbo, formerly live. Uh, if you've been following along at all, you know that there's been a lot of trouble with Facebook Live and it being a pretty unreliable platform. Uh, so after over a dozen attempts in the last four days to be able to stream more than a few seconds of content at a time, uh, I've decided to try pre-recording and uploading that and then uh, hopefully we'll be able to do some some live question and answer sessions uh, otherwise if people have questions about a process that I'm doing uh, they can comment those or message them to me uh, on social media or email or I guess however uh, you feel most able to get in touch with me and then if we can't do live sessions I'll at least be able to answer those in each successive video segment. So I'm gonna do my best to keep these concise and to the point, uh, even more so than the live streams, because I don't want to, to have hours and hours of pre-recorded content, but I also don't want to do really any editing, if it's at all possible. I set out on this uh, hoping to share this project with people uh, both for your entertainment and for my benefit to feel like I'm connected to a community a little bit. But I don't feel like uh, learning video editing and paying for software and, and doing all of that uh, as part of this. I'm still uh, trying to keep this as minimalist as possible, which uh, was the goal from the beginning with that live stream, which was a free, easy way to do it where in theory I could interact with people. So we're losing the real-time interaction, at least for now. Uh, but hopefully we're gonna gain reliability so that if I, if, if I post a video, you'll be able to see it and watch the whole thing rather than you getting six notifications that I've gone live, followed by five seconds of video and a failure. So without further ado, here's where things are at. If you've been following that live stream, the last successful stream was me cutting the first uh, blank, the first rib off of a billet of beautiful quarter sawn Iowa walnut. I managed to get 18 slices, which you can see here, from that billet. My wastage rate was a little below 40%, which is really good for when you're making a bunch of slices out of one board. Um, that getting 18 is perfect. That gives me enough to build the instrument plus a couple of spares uh, for when I mess something up. Um, and they're all, uh, all really nice slices. Uh, we'll talk a little more about these in a minute uh, when I, I do a little demonstrating of what's happening to them now. The other key part of making the bowl of the instrument is the spacers that go in between the ribs and these are typically a contrast uh, spacer. It both looks cool, it looks nice, and it serves to hide any small variations in the location of the seam or uh, in, in the case of real major errors, any small gaps, which we try to not have any gaps, but if we do, this will still make them less noticeable. And again, it will hide any misalignments uh, because you have this really, that really nice bright contrast line that's gonna draw the eye to it. But as you can see, this particular piece uh, of stringing is much too short for this instrument. This is a big instrument. And so I have acquired a piece of holly uh, large enough to do stringing for this instrument. I will be using holly because it's a nice contrast to the walnut. And uh, you could also have used ebony uh, for contrast on these, but a piece of ebony this size is a very expensive thing and I'm trying to keep my costs down here during social isolation because with no income coming in, I don't want to be putting all my uh, income into, into nice material, no matter how beautiful it is. Uh, so this holly is a little more affordable. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's holly. It's the, uh, it's the plant that the glossy, spiky leaves and the berries form on uh, left 
to its own in the wild. Uh, wild holly grows into a tree. Uh, it's an evergreen angiosperm. It's a hardwood. It's not a softwood, but it is evergreen. And it produces this wonderful creamy white wood, which has almost no tannin in it, which means it doesn't yellow with oxidation and UV exposure. It stays very, very bright for the entire lifespan of the material, uh, which is important because woods like walnut, walnut is very rare in that it's one of the only woods that actually gets lighter as it ages. It will, it will become uh, more golden in color. And other woods tend to yellow as the tannin content in them oxidizes. And you've maybe seen pieces of furniture that are made more cheaply where they have marquetry uh, or inlay, some sort of contrast work that's been done with, say, walnut and maple as opposed to, say, ebony and holly or walnut and holly. And within, easily within 50 years, uh, and depending on what kind of finish has been put on them, that maple gets more yellow, that walnut gets lighter, and you wind up crossing into that territory where there's still a difference, but it's not enough of a difference that you get a beautiful contrast. It's enough that it just looks a little off. It's very dull, it, it doesn't catch the eye, it's not bright and beautiful. So that's why a wood like holly that is both white and also will stay white is ideal for this. So this will get sliced into thin strips, which then themselves will get cut into thinner strips to be used to make that stringing. And when I am doing the final preparation of those to put into the back of the instrument uh, as we work, I'll show you how I do the final thicknessing to get those exactly dialed in to the about. Those will probably be about three quarters of a millimeter wide uh, on this instrument, I think is what I'm shooting for. Uh, so I'll show you how I do that. I've got a little tool I made myself that I think is very clever uh, for doing it. Uh, but that will not be today because I still have some work to do with the band saw and uh, with the hand plane and to, to turn this into stringing of the appropriate length for this project. What I am doing right now, what I have nearly finished, but I wanted to make sure I showed you, which is part of why it was so frustrating that the live feed kept failing because I really want you to see part of this process, but I also really want to keep moving on this instrument. And uh, so it was really annoying that I've had to keep stopping and trying to figure out what's going on uh, rather than moving forward with putting the instrument together. Uh, I wanted to show how it is that I am finally thinning these down and preparing them to be used. So if you watched the video where I started slicing ribs, you saw that I spent quite a bit of time preparing the bandsaw and making sure that everything was set up just right. And this is where that pays off. Uh, if you're doing it with a less well set bandsaw or in certain woods that are harder to work with, you have to go thicker. You're probably cutting these at two or two and a quarter millimeters, where I cut them at one and three quarter millimeters. And it can take an hour a piece to get these thinned down to the correct thickness and perfectly smooth on the, the face. And that's a lot of time. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're looking at 18 of these, 18 hours of hand planing to get these ready is a lot. Uh, but because I've got this quarter sawn walnut that's air dried, it tools beautifully. I don't have to worry hardly at all about tear out or chipping because I had a really good resaw blade in the saw and I took the time to set the saw up properly. These are very close to flat and smooth already, which means I just have to clean them up a tiny bit, take that quarter of a millimeter off to get them down to 1.5 millimeters and smooth on one face, and these are ready to use. So it's going really quickly, it's really pleasant, and I'm gonna show you how that works here. So I've got these set out, so that, uh, and I don't know if you can see on the camera right now, visibly the difference between this pile and this pile. These are the ones that have now been planed and they are just glassy smooth and silky and have this wonderful look. The color is very clear. This pile looks duller and this is still the best face on this pile coming off the machine joiner, which makes a very nice cut for a machine. It's very well set up but it's still inferior to this hand plane surface. 
So this jointed face is going to be the inside of the instrument. I'm not really going to mess with it at all on these ribs. Instead, I am going to take the back side, which is the bandsaw cut, and I'm going to smooth that into this beautiful hand plane surface. And that's what will be the exterior of the instrument. So I have these already set here so that the runout on the board is such that if I just take them and flip them over, they will now plane beautifully from this end to that end. So I flip them, I clamp them. You always want to fasten these at the end you are working from, not the end you are working toward. Because if you take something as thin as this, and you, traditionally when you're planing, you have a planing stop that's at the end, and you push against the board, and it pushes against that, and that allows you to plane it. With something this thin, if you do that, it will buckle up, and that force you're putting into it will push it up, and it will shatter. It will break. And so we always want to have it fastened at the end we are working away from. And now, if it'll give me just, uh, just a quick moment to set the camera, I'm going to show you up close and personal how this works. Okay, so I've got you in close here, so hopefully you can see this as it happens and get a nice satisfying experience. We start at this far end, and right now this still has all the little ripples from the bandsaw in it. So we push for our cut, and you can see we just take very sparse shavings. We're just taking down those high spots from the saw. A second pass down the center. A third pass means we've now done the entire face once. Starting to get shavings there. go. Beautiful, thin shavings. These are very, very thin. Uh, a little over a thousandth of an inch. And that is now smooth. There are no more marks from that saw. Well, a little bit right there. We'll take another very thin pass on that edge and that edge only. Beautiful, smooth. I don't know if you can see on the camera, but this is just a perfectly quarter sewn piece of walnut. There's beautiful silking, just gorgeous, gorgeous grain here. So I turn it around. Now I'm working against the direction uh, of the of the run out in this board against that radial grain or tangential grain rather but since this is such a short pass there it's not hard it's going to tend to cut a little deeper working against that grain which means typically after only two passes I'm about where I need to be. Just like that. Totally smooth. So now I take my caliper, I double check my thickness. All along the length, along both edges, just make sure I don't have any fat spots or thin, really thin spots. If I do, I want to mark those and get rid of them. You know, cut around them, work around them. And that is a rib that has now been planed and is ready to use. So I will take this, I will take the number its sequence in the slice, this was number 12. I will now write that on the usable face. 
so that I know exactly the order that these go in. We'll do another one here in just a moment. I apologize, a little skip there. I realized I didn't have the uh, phone set to do not disturb and I didn't want to want to do some deafeningly loud notifications for you guys if someone called me. So I have adjusted that. Flip this over. And this whole process hinges on good setup before I cut these blanks and on a really Beautifully sharp plane, which of course stays sharp that much longer because I don't have to take off a great deal of material with it. This one is still just a little bit thick at this end. That's it. Cleaning these up is as simple as that. And so here you can see how beautifully all of that grain lines up from one slice to the next. The pattern, the pattern moves over each piece nearly identical to the piece on either side of it. That beautiful, beautiful air dried Iowa walnut purple brown color. And a grain pattern that will be mirrored by each piece to the one next to it as we work around the bowl of the instrument. So that is how we finish preparing these, uh, these blanks to become ribs. Uh, that's where I'm going to leave it for tonight. Uh, thank you for following me from Facebook Live to, to this. Uh, I hope you'll stick with it. If you have any questions, let me know because I want to answer those. Um, I look forward to 
interacting with you, even if there's a bit of a delay uh, in the videos going forward. Uh, next time, we'll be looking at how we lay out our, our ribs on these, and then we'll start making them and, and uh, putting this instrument together. So, thanks so much. Uh, hope you're all staying sane out there during this time of, uh, of social isolation. And uh, stay safe. Stay home.